Hey guys, it's me, it's me, it's Jay Stone. So today is a really, um, I'm gonna say special day for me, kind of an anniversary. So three years ago today, I had gastric bypass surgery. So at the time, you know, I was really, really heavy, right? At my heaviest size yet. And there's a lot that I learned at being nearly 500 pounds, right? And there's a lot of lessons I learned through the weight loss journey about myself as an entrepreneur. So I'm going to share some of these lessons with you today because I, I know a lot of people out there are, are struggling with, you know, imposter syndrome. They're struggling with moving forward and uh, there, there's lots of self-talk, right, that plays a factor in how you see yourself, how you think others see you, and where you see yourself in the world. So I'm going to talk a little bit about a few things. So hold on one second. And I was trying to do this kind of in an informal way, but I just felt like you guys need to see the pictures to understand what was happening with me. So put your big girl panties on. Put your big girl panties on. Let's talk about my 500-pound life lessons. Okay. My 500 pound life lessons. So at my heaviest, like I said, I was about 485 pounds, which is very close to 500 pounds. In fact, I avoided the scale a lot. So I probably actually did tip the scales at 500 pounds. Okay. And this was back in 2019. All right. And so I put years on these pictures so you can kind of see where I was building my brand at the time. So during that time frame, okay, I uh, still built a seven figure brand. I traveled around the country. I was speaking on stages. I was on national TV show. I was on TD Jake show in 2013. Um, I had a full page spread in Essence Magazine. I did a live conference with over 300 people. I had several conferences. In fact, hosted several conferences at the time and people used to fly from around the world to attend my events, right? And I even attended these events. So lots of times I sat in chairs on stage and I even uh, used a scooter to get around, right? The mobility scooter to get around. And what was really driving me was to take care of my quadriplegic father, right? Promise to never put him in a nursing home. And so really that focus was, let me take care of him. Let me take care of him. And that meant whatever it took. And so when I got to the point where, you know, the airlines started to charge for two seats because of my size, right? It was just a matter of, I just need to make more money, right? Because now I got to buy two seats instead of me. And actually I had an assistant most of the time. So I was buying three seats to go on these trips. And so it was a matter of earning enough money to still uh, uh, produce the brand and live the lifestyle. So that was a big deal, okay? It looked easy, right? I was smiling on the outside. I was happy on the outside. My videos were happy on the outside, on the outside. but carrying that weight gave me a lot of painful lessons. And I don't just mean the physical lessons, right? There was a lot of lessons about perseverance, a lot of lessons about um, people, Okay, so I'm going to share, you know, some of my five biggest lessons with you. And again, this picture right here was 2017. Okay. All right. So um, you are your biggest obstacle. That was the thing, right? Because I remember having a lot of excuses like um, I can't travel. You know what I'm saying? I can't travel because I got to pay for two plane tickets. And it was like, well, just buy, make enough money to buy the extra plane ticket. You know what I mean? Or fly first class and then you don't have to worry about it. So it was a matter of I had to elevate my lifestyle, right, to accommodate my size. So I had to do, you know, the, the suite because the smaller room uh, was uncomfortable for me and I had to pull my scooter in. So I had to do a handicapped room. I had to do suite. I had to be able to afford those things, especially if I had an assistant or somebody like me, they needed a room. So I had to figure out how to afford it. So the, the natural answer was to what? Make more money. Okay. So there were two things holding me back, right? Money and mindset. If you make enough money, there's so many doors that open to you because you pay to be for access. Okay. So the first thing I had to do was conquer my mindset around what I was capable of doing and what was possible, 
Okay, what was possible? It wasn't that things couldn't be done. It just cost me more money to do it. So now let's just make more money. Now, once I made that decision to just make more money, that's when doors opened up. On the left, you see the picture of me in 2018 and then a picture of me in 2022. Okay, so this is what my life was like, right? I just took this picture a couple of weeks ago, right? This was me in 2022. So, I mean, 2018. So this is what I was struggling with, okay? Now, the number two lesson, the number two lesson is your goals have to be bigger than your ego, okay? And I say that because a lot of times we allow people to, to distract us from our goals. So my goal had to be bigger than my fear of failure. My goal had to be bigger than what people think of me. My goal had to be bigger than my um, desire, right, to be safe and comfortable, right? I did not like, when I started being online back in 2013, I had a picture of just like my face, right? Because I have a slim face compared to the rest of my body. So that was the piece that I was comfortable with showing myself. In fact, when I first, first got online, I actually had a caricature of myself. It wasn't my real self. I was so afraid of being judged. I was so afraid of being discounted because of my weight. And so what I realized by 2015 is that when Periscope and all of that came out, people didn't give a shit how big I was. They wanted the information I had. They wanted my skill set. They wanted my strategy. Um, and so I had to focus on getting the bag and my desire to get the money, my desire to help people, my desire to have transportation, my desire to create a quality of life that worked around this weight, okay, was bigger, was bigger than what people thought of me. It was bigger than my feelings being hurt. It was bigger than, I don't care what, what they're going to say about me. What, that, what do I look like? I just, I just had to squash all of that and make my goals bigger, okay? That was big. So let's talk about uh, 2019, right? Uh, in 2019, this picture right here was literally taken about two weeks before I had surgery, okay? And then I took this picture around Christmas time in 2022, last year, okay? So this was literally two, three weeks before the surgery. This is what I was looking like, okay? Success is not a size. I remember uh, when I had just really started my business and I really first started taking off. And this was even before social media. And I remember being stuck somewhere in the airport, sitting in a wheelchair, waiting to be rolled to my plane. I had gotten food poisoning. I was sick. And I remember a corporate executive for one of my clients, one of my clients, it was a client, one of the corporate executives from my, it was, it was Turner Broad, no, I mean, excuse me, it was um, Time Warner, right? One of the exec, Time Warner was a client of mine. One of the executives from Time Warner, I heard her say, she doesn't look like a brand strategist. She doesn't look successful. You understand what I'm saying? And I was saying, gosh, I can't even be sick, you know? And then I realized she wasn't just talking about like my hair being a mess and all that. She was also talking about my size. I didn't look successful. So over the years, I've been told several times, you know, fat people are lazy. Uh, fat people, uh, you know, you don't, if you don't, how can you help me get forward when you don't even, you're not even structured, you're not even organized. It's just all of these bullshit ideas around what success looks like, whether or not you're disciplined, what is the definition of beauty, uh, whether or not you have strong integrity or work ethic based on the fact that you're so big, you, this could not possibly apply, right? So I had to introduce a new narrative. You know what I'm saying? I overworked, I, I outworked motherfuckers from my desk. I outworked motherfuckers from a chair. I outworked people. I outran people on a scooter. You understand what I'm saying? I had to change the narrative around people's understanding or people's perception of what success looked like, what happy looked like, what beauty looked like, what discipline behaved like, how did it all move? I had to be the person to introduce them to, to, to the new narrative, right? And I didn't have to sit back. I wasn't sitting back and, and asking people to accept me. The first thing I did was accept it myself and show up with the expectation that they would as well. And in, at any time when I felt that they did not accept me, then I just created a new space, Okay. So that was number three. Number four is weight, weight loss has many forms. A lot of people think about weight loss as physically losing weight. And I took this picture right here back in 2000, 
21. Okay. Losing weight. You have to, I, I lost a lot of different kinds of weight. I lost the physical weight, but with that came the freedom. So, so it was a lot of stuff that I didn't deal with because I didn't have the bandwidth to deal with it because being so big, I just didn't have the energy for certain things. So I allowed certain shit to go on in my personal life. Right. So releasing that weight allowed me to then release the emotional weight. It also, I was paying for a lot of things, right? And I was paying because I didn't have the energy to go in and say, I don't need this. I don't want to fight for this. I don't want to subscribe for this. I don't want to pay for this anymore. I'm not going to, so I didn't have, so I released a lot of financial responsibility by focusing on me. Okay, by taking care of me. When I was able to lose that weight, I had more energy. I had more bandwidth to deal with things that were weighing me down. So that was physical. That was financial stuff, right? I stopped trying to pay for everybody's stuff and take care of everybody and, and solve everybody else's problem. And, you know, sometimes I, I contribute to stuff financially because I physically couldn't do it. You know what I'm saying? A friend of mine is sick. I can't go take care of him. I can't cook dinner. So I'll just pay to have some stuff shipped to him, right? So I was throwing money at people because I couldn't show up in any other way. Right. Uh, the emotional baggage. It was again, like I said, people were treating me a certain kind of way. Right. But because I needed help, I needed support. Right. I was allowing certain things because it's like I can't do this myself. So I'm going to deal with it. Right. So there were a lot of things that were carrying that I was carrying around. And those things sabotaged my level of success to a certain degree. OK. To a certain degree. Okay, so release shit. That was my whole thing in 2020 and 2021. I released a lot of shit. Those first two years after that surgery, I released a lot of stuff and I released people. Let's talk about that releasing of people shit, right? Releasing people was massive for me. Okay. Releasing people was massive for me. There were people that were there. They helped me. They supported me physically, emotionally. I started losing the weight. I started needing them less and less. And as I started to need them less, right, they started to feel some kind of way about it. It was like their identity in our relationship was them taking care of me or them showing up for me or them supporting me. When I became more independent, okay, come on now, you would think that that was a good thing. But it became a struggle, right? People were like, oh, she don't need nobody. Let me show her that she need me. You know, I had, and it wasn't just one person. It was several people, several people identified. They created their space in my life based on my need for them. Okay. And when I no longer needed them in that way, they didn't feel valuable. And it became a point of contention for us. All right. So when I say sometimes you got to release people, uh, people that I definitely thought that were in my life forever, turned out to be seasonal. It was in my fat season. It was in my codependent season. It was in my, I need some help season. When I'm in the, the independent season or the interdependent season, they don't know how to show up. Okay. So that was a massive, hugely painful lesson for me. Okay. And then number five, okay. Number five. Okay. If my slides want to work with me, uh Oh, went too fast. Okay. Number five, OK, joy is intentional and not circumstantial. OK, joy is intentional and not circumstantial. So let me break that down. So this is my picture with me and my family back in 2017. And of course, this is me in 2021. So I lost about 200 pounds. I'm still working. Right. It's still a process. I ain't done yet. You know, I have more weight to release for me. Right. This is a not. Let me just say this real quick as a caveat. This is not about what I look like. This is not about I needed to get my I, I didn't have um, issues with blood pressure. I didn't have diabetes. I didn't have that. I had some fucked up knees. Right. But other than that, I really didn't have a lot of health problems. OK. I lost the weight for mobility issues. Right. I lost the weight because I wanted to walk more than 10 steps without with knowing how to without running out of breath. OK, I wanted to fit in a regular bathroom stall. I wanted to shop at regular stores for regular clothes. Right. So it really was improving my quality of life. That's what I did it for. Right. So with that came. Joy. OK, 
I became very happy about being independent and not needing anybody to help me. I was trapped in my body. I was building this seven figure brand in a prison of my own creation, which was the weight. Okay. So, um, when I broke out of jail, right, broke out of prison, okay, when somebody put some on my commissary, okay, I was joyful, I was happy, I was excited, okay, and then I realized, right, that other things could happen and steal that joy from you. And so I had to be intentional. You know what I'm saying? I had to start guarding it like a jealous lover. You know what I'm saying? I had to start guarding my joy, guarding my peace, right? I had to be careful and mindful of who I allowed in my space. I had to be careful and mindful of what I listened to. I had to be careful and mindful of what I watch on TV because situations will steal joy, right? I, I was addicted to my news feed. I was addicted to the news. I was addicted to all of those things. And those things come in and they they, they put a, a shadow over your joy. They, they steal little pieces of happiness from you. And so I had to become intentional and not let external circumstances affect my joy. I had to wake up every morning and say, okay, today I'm going to be joyful. This thing that isn't joyful happened to me and I'm going to compartmentalize that because I'm not going to let that creep into my joyous space. Right. And so the one thing that everybody says is, Jay, you look so happy. Jay, you look so excited. I mean, you just really seem happy. It's because I became intentional about that joy. That's what this is. The joy is not just, oh, she's happy. She's free. She lost weight. She feel better. No, no. I, I actually had an epiphany that when I wake up every morning and I'm happy, I was happy about things. But what happens when those things go away? I still want to be happy. So I had to be intentional about creating and, and, and the joy, creating things in my life that were joyful, having experiences that were joyful, finding joy every day, being grateful every day. You know what I'm saying? Good morning, son. I'm happy for the grateful for the sun. Good morning, blanket. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, light. Good morning, phone. Good morning, whatever. Okay. Finding joy and continuously to operate in a place of joy. That's about being intentional. That's about being intentional. So those are the five lessons that I have. And so I'm in the process of doing so many things with my brain. I really had to take, I took all of 2021 to just figure out who I want to be in this new body, in this new space, in this new world. And at the end of the day, I'm still the brand mother, right? Uh, I'm still the brand mother. And so despite losing 200 pounds, right, I still am the same person internally. I still have the same gifts that I want to offer to the world, right? And more importantly, I still have transformations to help you create. So I'm Jake Stone. Follow me, like, comment, share, save, subscribe, okay? You're going to see a lot more from me in the coming weeks, in the coming months, helping you build a bankable brand. I'll catch you on the flip side. <laughs>